Yeah, good afternoon. It's good to be here. We thank God for today. Thank God that God has made this dream, this vision, a reality today. Where do we get the money, His Excellency the Governor, to embark on this very important project? I would like to say, vision drives everything. The vision drives everything. When you have the right vision, you actually also know what to do, how to do, when to do, to actualize your vision. His Excellency the Governor, at the inception of his administration, identified that we need to industrialize Akwaibum State. He set out to find out the key areas of gap that we is um, industrialization program needs to be focused on. We identify that agriculture is one good area that God has given to Akwaibom State and agricultural produce. The value chain of agricultural produce is one of the things that has given the excellency the governor The vision to focus on this uh, refinery, coconut refinery here, and when he was able to get his feasibility study right, uh, it was not difficult for him to get the money because His Excellency has taken this project as very important and with a lot of benefit. Therefore, we were able to come everywhere in the state to ensure that we put in all that we have to make this project a reality. So for me, I think the, the vision was right. Based on our vision to get this project out, we were able to harness every resources available to our state to ensure the actualization of this project. Okay, what would you say to those who perhaps are say not convinced that <laughs> this vision has come to reality? Because I remember one um, a politician who said on radio that the only party and saw signposts and that nothing is happening. Well, today, God has proved that His Excellency governed this state with a sincere heart. There were a lot of people that said that the uh, industrialization program of His Excellency is a mirage. But today, with the coming to fruition and the actualization of this project, God has proved them wrong and has proved His Excellency the heart of sincerity that He is using in administering our state. Today, I think they, they, all of them that said that there is no refinery here, there are no industrialization, they are proved wrong. Because we have the industry here. Today, His Excellency, the Vice President of Nigeria himself, is coming to commission this project. So the whole world has now proven that His Excellency Udo Emmanuel is a very serious-minded administrator of our state. Thank you. Honorable Commissioner for Finance talking to us right here at the venue of the event at this at the where the factory is is, is, is uh, situated and talking to us we'll definitely bring him back uh, we know that uh, subsequently Aquaibom said we'll be self-sustaining and uh, by the grace of god other states will be able to follow suit with the kind of raw material they have to improve upon our economy because dependent on oil is no longer an assurance thank you honorable commissioner for coming thank you all right. You see, uh, you see coconut refinery because coconut refinery is all agriculture. Uh, Madam, a lot of people want to know who you are and your ministry. I am Dr. Ofiong Ofo, the Commissioner for Agriculture at Waibom State. Okay. Yes. Value chain. Coconut refinery. Are we going to see a boom in the plantation of coconut in Akwaibom and beyond? Yes. Last year the coconut day was celebrated and 
the government gave out free coconut palms to public primary and secondary schools and to farmers in Akwai Bomb states. So we have, and the government is currently cultivating coconut in Bahrain, in East Nobolo, Ikarabasi, and Okobo local government areas. And there are other small house grower schemes of coconut cultivation in plantations in Akwai Bomb. All geared towards having raw materials enough to feed the coconut factory that will soon be commissioned. So that's to ensure that we continue having raw materials so that the factory keeps running. And beyond that, there is employment generation, it's a source of foreign exchange. Coconut oil is the new liquid gold. So it's taking us from the over dependence on oil to agriculture. So that's why we are now. I just appreciate you. Thank you. I, I, am I free to plant coconut in my house? Anywhere you have space, please plant coconut. His Excellency has got this state of the art coconut oil factory. It's the first of its kind in Africa. It churns out 300,000 coconuts in one shift. That results in 22,000 tons of coconut per shift. And currently, the global market price of coconut oil stands at $2,016 a ton. So that will be a lot of revenue for the states, foreign earnings, employment opportunities, so many much more. We thank His Excellency, the agriculture friendly governor, the governor that is focused on industrialization, in taking people off unemployment and making them gainfully employed. We thank him for this notable project. Thank you, Madam Talk Thank you. That was the Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture talking to us right here. Uh, we want to believe that uh, listening in and watching us here, you avail yourself the opportunity to make sure that the space you have, you put up coconut, it's going to be a source of income for you and your children yet unborn. Thank you, Madam, for coming.
Um, uh, a lot of dignitaries are coming in in droves as we and as we speak um, uh, a lot of dignitaries are coming in in droves as we are coming in in droves as we
still expecting the arrival of His Excellency the Governor and of course the visitor talking about the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Osibanjo. And of course our lighting from his vehicle is a uh, Deputy Governor. Uh, if you can follow me, uh, as I'm going to say hello to the Deputy Governor of Akwaibum, say hello to the Deputy Governor of Akwaibum. Uh, Your Excellency, we are welcome. Yes, that's the Deputy Governor coming in. And um, we are also expecting a lot of dignitaries to come into this place and then support the commission and the unveiling of the coconut, first ever coconut refinery in Nigeria. Yes, uh, that's uh, Moses Ebo MLI talking. Is, uh, elected to be part of this history. You know, we were here on 24th of May 2017 when essentially the governor came here and said he was laying a foundation uh, stone, uh, performing a groundbreaking ceremony for a multi a billion era uh, coconut oil factory. We didn't understand what it meant, we didn't know what he was talking about because we've never heard of that kind of. Um, technology before, but today I'm happy to be part of this history. I'm happy to be. When essentially the governor came here and said he was laying a foundation uh, stone, uh, performing a groundbreaking ceremony for a multi a billion era uh, coconut oil factory. We didn't understand what it meant, we didn't know what he was talking about because we've never heard of that kind of um, technology before. But today I'm happy to be part of this history. I'm happy to be here. Okay. Generally speaking, um, a lot of people never heard of coconut refinery. This was very new. We've heard what um, political detractors uh, say they only see signposts. They don't think the factory is existing. And uh, today His Excellency has made that possible. How would you, how would you describe His Excellency? He has made a quite of sense. This is a technology that is um, quite... Um is, is synonymous with uh, India and Akwaibom said first and now coconut refinery makes Akwaibom said first again. Yes, I, I can say for sure that this technology is very new as far as Africa is concerned. This is a technology that is um, quite um, is, is synonymous with uh, India and of course uh, some other parts of uh, Europe. So. It is the first time this is being brought to Africa and is by the vision of Governor Udom Emmanuel. This factory as it stands here can crack as much as one million coconuts in one day. And that means that it can employ over 3,000 workers working in shifts of three shifts. 3,000 direct workers can work here in this facility. That is a very big boost to the fight against unemployment by Governor Udom Emmanuel. But it is a very nice project. And it also means that farmers in Akwaibom State can also begin cultivating coconut and supplying the coconut food as a raw material for this factory. It's a very, very big multiplier, multiplier effect industry that is going to boost the economy of Akwaibom State. And I understand now that even some other states are also trying to copy this technology to go and replicate in their own state because this is a new, the new um, oil market as far as um, business is concerned in the world. Yeah, I, I would want other states to copy it. I would want, um, especially maybe Cross River State, um, River State, um, Bayelsa State, a Delta State, because these are all, um, all um, water. I mean, surrounded by water. You know, coconut thrive very well in that, in that yes that kind of area and uh you know quite well say we have the longest coastline and uh, as a result of that everybody is given the responsibility to go home and plant at least two three seed of coconut you'll be making some fucking money brother and of course you don't need to complain anymore Aquaibum youth are not lazy, you know that? If you don't want to be lazy, you go plant coconut. Governor Domi Manuel has given us a reasonable uh, pattern with which you can earn a living without begging. Yes, without doing Yahoo. Yes, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the governor has implored every Aquaibum child, every Aquaibum son and daughter to go into coconut farming. This is a very easy way to become a contractor. You cannot be duped with this matter because as far as we're concerned, every day of the week, 
every day of the month. This factory is going to run optimally and it's going to be in need of constant supply of raw material, which is just coconut. So that means that you won't have to have coconut in your backyard and then you use it only for rice and coconut rice. You can now use coconut as a raw material for our industry and you can also earn in dollars. No, I said you tell them that coconut has 364 properties. So there are 365. Yes. So that means that every day of the year has a function for coconuts. And you know what? Apart from pomade and deodorant, apart from soap and of course uh, oil, you can even make carpet. Carpet, I mean carpet with coconut. It has a lot of properties. And so we don't have any reason to complain this time around. No, as a matter of fact, it also means that all of the people in Akwa will say, whether you are in Ikono, you are in Ini, you are in Eket, you are in Oron, you are in Ikono Basi, you are in Uyo, you just make use of your farm and plant coconut today. So you can be a raw and exchange earner tomorrow. And don't forget that this government has also introduced a special breed of coconut that can yield in just two and a half years, three years, you are already supplying coconut. So start your coconut farming today and become a, a foreign exchange earner. We also expect other governors to key into this vision, a way of diversifying from uh, the handout kind of uh, economy. When I say handout kind of economy, I'm talking about over dependent on crude oil. Very soon, other countries are walking away from crude. We are talking about electric cars and the likes. Why can't we improve upon by putting up technology a little bit in place? Look for a younger person in the seat of governance. Let that person bring this level of creativity that Governor David Manuel has brought. You can see the mood. Everybody is happy here. Aside the traditional dance, you go there, you see a whole lot of uh, people displaying their dance steps. And a lot of Aquaman people will make so much money. All right, you're welcome, sir. Good to have you. You had the production today, and uh, you will understand what that means. And a lot of Aquaman people will make so much money. All right, you're welcome, sir. Good to have you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And so, you know that. And so, you have the opportunity now to make money. Don't complain. Don't go into Yahoo. Do the right thing. I said with just 20 seedlings of coconut, you're already a millionaire. So what are we talking for? Uh, since we're still waiting for his arrival uh, with his guests, the, the vice president, uh, we allow you to enjoy the traditional drums. We'll definitely come back to you and talk things out with a sender, so don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Yeah, yeah.
natural endowment in a crime of state, we also endowed with a lot of cultural potentials. The cultural display that you have here is from a crime of state. And you know what? This is more or less in the days of old when you're talking about folklore, folk tales, where our forebears need to sit down and discuss about the future of our children. You know, they use this to settle disputes, they use this to do a whole lot. The essence that the Quai Bom said is very peaceful is that we are very cultural. There's mutual respect and understanding in a Quai Bom state. And His Excellency reneged on those potentials, and today a Quai Bom said is very peaceful. The cultural art here is a clear demonstration of talent, innate ability, and capabilities that can even generate revenues. That is to say, if the Ministry of Culture and Tourism can tap into these enormous resources, a private set being a destination will not just end by a mere statement. There will be action to it. And that was the essence of the establishment of the hotels and golf resorts. In the light of this, aside from business that we are doing, we have culture, we relax, we feel free, we are safe. We're very peaceful. And that's why we want to see His Excellency at the center of Nigeria, where he can take decisions that will bring peace, unity to Nigeria. I am sometimes very delighted that one man who perhaps discovered Nigeria with a wife never knew that a day like this will come where Akwaibom will be able to produce a governor who is thinking industrialization, who is thinking diversion of uh, revenue from oil to agriculture. Earlier on I spoke with the Commissioner for Agriculture and she told us that the value chain of coconut factory is enormous. That is to say you can make money, you can generate income, you can also make so much revenue for your local governments, for your states and Nigeria if we can diversify our economy. It's not enough to talk about it. It is very important we practice it. In Akwaibom we have started. Let's take it to Nigeria. It's not enough to make it a political statement. Rather it will be very meaningful and useful if we can translate it to what Udom Emmanuel has done in Akwaibom State. I'll get back to you. I want to direct you to one other aspect of our culture that a lot of people don't really know. The Ekpo Masquerade. If you can see the Ekpo Masquerade here, you know, if a child is stubborn in those days, they'll use Ekpo to scare the child to stop being stubborn. And you know, and uh, in a choir of saying, Ekpo Masquerade uh, is used to direct children to do the right thing. You know, in those days, um, people in the Apo culture are so safe than what we have in some churches today. So uh, have fun. People are so happy and they are bringing in several cultural, uh, 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 you know, several cultural displays to celebrate the capacity of Udom Emmanuel. All right. Okay, we get back to this one. Let us dance while we are waiting the arrival of the Vice President. And uh, His Excellency Governor Dome Mano, don't go nowhere.
Well, I say I still enjoy the cultural display of our crime on people. Like I said, we are so enormous when it comes to cultural uh, endowment. But there's one gentleman who would want to speak. He is from this locality. And he understands how this place works. In Baladin, people are very happy. And they want to associate with this project. Sir, so could you tell us your name, who you are? They're watching you all over the world. My name is Honorable Kanye Wuli. I'm a vice chairman of the local government. Immigrant pass member, set technical school board. I am from a good local government area. Yes, this is your senatorial district. How do you look at this project? This is one project that is very dear to the hearts of the people of this senatorial district and by extension this state. This is the first ever coconut refinery east of the Niger. And uh, it's unprecedented. It's a great milestone for the administration of Governor Odom Gabriel Emmanuel in his uh, industrialization drive. You can see that um, today, you can see the smiles of uh, the smile on the faces of everybody here, showing that everybody is happy. We appreciate the efforts of His Excellency the Governor in bringing this very laudable project to this part of the state. I want to appreciate you for coming. I wish you success as well in your political endeavor. Thank you very Have much. Have fun. Thank you very much. Well, we are still having fun here. You listen to him there. He's happy that his excellency has brought this to his territorial district. He's from Akat. What are we doing business here? His coastline is also good for coconut. So he has business already. Yes, thank you. Well, that's it. We'll definitely come back to you. I want you to enjoy and have fun. You know what? Don't leave a quiet bomb. We are very productive. You know what coconut stands for? I don't want to spoil you a little. I'll be right back.
Yeah, like I said before, we have several people who are going to make their contribution in support of this project. And because uh, there was a whole lot of uh, noise when this project was ongoing, a lot of critics did not even dare to come see what's going on here or what was being done. And they went on pages, news of newspapers, they went on radio, they went on social media to discredit that it is not possible. But today, Governor Dobby Manuel has made it possible. You know, and just like we say, with God, all things are possible. So, Governor Domi Manuel believes so much in God. And only God can make things possible. Yes, I have my friend. He's going to tell me everything about himself. I don't want to talk so that I wouldn't look as if I am. <laughs> tell us about yourself and uh, why you're here. Well, my name is Honorable uh, Kanye Deo. I'm a former member of our representatives. My God says, well, I've heard what you said. We are here because of this uh, refinery commission. If there's anything we believe in the governor, we don't. he's not a man of hype and he doesn't lie. I like telling people who don't do his own thing extraordinary. This particular project, like many others he has commissioned, is something that is going to position this state in the nearest future. This is not the first one he has commissioned. We have the metering company, we have the flour mill, we have the syringe, and so many others. And I thank God for this. The importance of coconut oil is known by deep economists and deep investors. In fact, let me even shock us. Coconut refined oil is more costly than crude oil. So why can't we embrace it? So when I got the invitation to attend this uh, commissioning, I saw it a blessing thing. I've heard you. People must hide, people must talk, people must lie. But Udom Emmanuel is a man of his word. And may God continue to keep him for his remaining days, especially his succession program, so that he will do well. I am sure the one that is coming up is still going to do well like him. Because Udom is an investor, he knows what is good for this state. We will not stand here and count on so many things, but we know what he has done. And may God give him the grace to complete them in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for coming, Honorable. Thank you. I wish you the very best in your political endeavor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's it. If you listen to Honorable, he said, Governor Domi Manuel in political panels is talk and do. I'll still be bringing in more guests to talk to you right here so that you can believe in Akwai Bomb. You can believe in Governor Domi Manuel. And it is only God. I'll be right back.
State of the Federation, but in Akwaibom State, we use you use song to celebrate our success. We use culture to display the peace and benevolence that God has given to us here in Akwaibom State. That has to do with the leadership. Dr. Domi Manuel's leadership is very painful. Places in time past in Akwaibom said that they would never give a position venue to do their own thing. Domi Manuel came in and said no. Everyone is from Akwaibom. Whether you are in opposition or not, use this venue, do whatever you want to do. Those are some of the things that are bringing peace. And that's why in Akwaibom said you don't have kidnapping, you don't have assassination anymore. So, we want us to see beyond politics. Let us see governance, let us see leadership in the person of Udom Emmanuel. If you have something that is good, and you don't advertise it, it means nobody will buy it. So we advertise our products. Governor Domi Manuel, it's like when the Japanese want to, you know, advertise their Toyota. They say, Joy, can I, Joy, can I? Good thinking, good products. Governor Domi Manuel falls within that realm of good thinking and good products. Yes, we have another thing to present for you. This time around, if you like the drum, you know what they call this drum? They call it a talking drum. And a talking drum, what it does, it commands the dance step. You know. And so you can see that the dancers will use the talking drum to do their dance step. So enjoy it.
Ladies and gentlemen, the arrival of Her Excellency, the wife of the Governor of Akwa Ibrahim State, our very beautiful First Lady, Her Excellency, Dickness Martha Udomi Mana, wife of the Governor of Akwa Ibrahim State, First Lady of this very beautiful state. Excellency, exchanging pleasantries with a cross section of the people of Akwaibu. Thank you. 
His Excellency to serve the people of Akwaibom said that indeed Nigeria is total. And so it's expected that every citizen of Akwaibom. <laughs> The content of your product, be proud of the character of your product, and be proud of your governor. Solomon, how are you feeling next time around? Yeah, I'm good. Good, very good. You're working very hard. Very good, very good. The entire uh, right. country is hooked up to Akwaibom State. Okay, like I said before, aside, um, aside dancing and aside uh, celebration, the most important thing that His Excellency has brought to the fore is the economy. Because you cannot celebrate all day without having money in your pocket. Akwaibom said, we'll soon be self-sustaining. With the income that is coming from Ibom Air and the expected income from Coconut Refinery, is that they expected that in the next couple of years, Akwaibom said will be self-sustaining. And we expect every other leader not to be politically about service. Rather, their service should be driven by policies so that the people can, in turn, benefit from their leadership. What would be your legacy when, after four years, or eight years, as the case may be, you leave power? In the case of Akwaibom State, everyone is a proud of Governor Dom Emmanuel. He's not a noisemaker, but he's a result-oriented leader. And so, wherever you are, irrespective of your political party, join hands with His Excellency, Let's build a Quibon set together and by the grace of God, he will duplicate this gesture in the Nigeria. Yes, you know, everybody is passing out. Everybody is so much here. And so you cannot really control people jumping uh, to the camera. Well, like I said before, uh, Solomon, we expect you to also uh, bring to the fore some of the messages that is coming up from our live, um, our live feed viewers. So that we can put it across here. Yeah. Aside, aside from the messages from Akwaibom, from Nigerians to Akwaibom State Governor and to the Akwaibom State Government, apart from that, I'm very happy to be alive to see this project, to witness the commissioning of this project. You know, some people at the, at, at the other divide used to say that this project does not exist, that this project is a scam. But today, today, everybody, Nigeria, the entire country is has hooked up to Okay, Bible. okay. You actually know that this project so is... No, sorry, I'm told that His Excellency has arrived. Uh, His Excellency is here. I'm told His Excellency is here. We cannot really see from this distance. It's expected that His Excellency will be walking here with the Vice President. Okay, they are coming in in a van and they are expected to be here. They are driving into the arena. And so, yes, people are so much... We have um, female voices. We have uh, a lot of them here. All right. And so, uh, yeah, you can see it. And also, and also, I'm glad to inform you that Berekete family has joined this broadcast live from Abuja. Oh, a good thing to have Berekete, a non-partisan human rights community joining. Uh, walking past is the secretary to the state government. Of course, uh, Dr. Ekuwem, yeah, Brekete, you've done well. The same Brekete visited Aquarium State and saw the effort of His Excellency and they decided to buy him a form to contest. Uh, that one was very genuine, not the also, other one. The MD of the factory. Yes, the MD, MD of the coconut refinery just walked past. And, uh, and the I can the rival of the governor. By the grace of God and the support of the people of this country, the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Mr. Udobi Bano, accompanied by His Excellency Mr. Gabriel Suswam, former governor of Federal States. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency the Governor, the gentleman who builds from scratch, 
the visioner himself. The man who sees tomorrow. Akwai Rebekan Governor. A compound that has a commando. Bawari for the president, though we may see some can go me. Ladies and gentlemen, may we please rise. Bom bia bira kembrero ya itre. Bia bira kembrero mbog ya itre. May we please rise for the national anthem.
Aquaibum State Anthem. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'll please request that we remain on our feet as I invite Elder Sam Udotan to please kindly come to this microphone and lead us in brief opening prayers. Please let us be in the mode of prayers. Our Father and our God, Father, we want to give you all the glory this day. We want to thank you because... You are God that always answers our prayers. Father, in 2017, I stood at this, at this arena to pray for the foundation laying ceremony of this company. It pleases you again today that in the commissioning, you've called me again, you've given me the opportunity again to thank you for that prayer answered. And it will remain and it will help the people of this environment. You stayed with this company right from the inception, the foundation laying ceremony, all the, uh, the activities of this place. We've not had any adverse thing, no accident, no casualty. Father, it was only you alone that were able to do that. That's why we say, Lord Jesus, thank you in Jesus' name. You are that same God that brought this company to this level. Father, our prayer this day is that this company will not be among those ones that always come and go in the mighty name of Jesus. This company will serve the purpose that your son has found it to be here in this state in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for the one that you've given the vision to make this company a reality. Lord, today is asking you to give me an opportunity to do the same in the country. Father, it's our prayer that what he has been able to do here in this state, you also give me the opportunity to do for this country, Nigeria, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, it's a, the prayer of this state, the prayer of all of us, that we produce the egg that lay the, 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 the end that laid the golden head in this place. Father, our prayer is that it is our time to also be in the saddle, to manage the resources of this nation that we've been producing over the years. And you found your son worthy. Lord Almighty, be with him. Give him the strength. Give him the energy. Let every part of this country accept him and give him the, the opportunity to save this nation. Father, for today, oh Lord Almighty, you brought us here safely. As we go in back, Lord Almighty, let your protecting arms be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against every principality and powers. Anything that always makes company not to survive. It will not affect this one. Be with us, O oh Lord Almighty. And let the prayer of your children be answered, even beyond our expectations. For we pray, believing in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, Elder Udosam Omotan, himself a former executive chairman of this local government area. We heard, and of course, a good number of us were witnesses. That it was he who said the opening prayers at the groundbreaking of this facility in the year 2017. And of course, we are here to commission another dream that has seen reality. Another evidence that Mr. Domi Manuel is a man who came to government prepared. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I please request that we welcome very specially and appreciate the visioner behind this project, the man that has turned the industrial and physical landscape of Aquaibum State into what we really did dream of. The gentleman that we hope that the people of Nigeria will see what the people of Aquaibum saw in 2015 and give him the opportunity 
and the responsibility of restoring hope to the people of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Akwaibum, please celebrate His Excellency, our Governor, Mr. Udum Emmanuel, who has made this. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, behind every and beside every performing governor is a very supportive First Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, let me request that we acknowledge the presence of and welcome Her Excellency, our First Lady, Dickness Martha Udum Imara. Please put your hands together for her. Let me welcome our special guest on this occasion, a gentleman who is a friend of Akwaibum State. And I think at this particular point, we really do acknowledge that he is not from here by blood, but as a matter of fact, he is a son of the soil. Ladies and gentlemen, the former governor of Benue State, His Excellency, Mr. Gabriel Susom is here, the civil senator. Please put your hands together for him. We welcome His Excellency the Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State, Mr. Moses Ekwo, who is here. Okay, Akwaibom, our Deputy Governor. The Speaker of the Akwaibom State House of Assembly, the Right Honorable Nyekan Basi is also here. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome Mr. Speaker. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on the delegation and of course being part of this event, I think it is also very proper that we acknowledge the presence of and welcome our brother, the former Minister of the Interior who is here. Ladies and gentlemen, Comrade Abba Moro, please put your hands together for him ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you join us, thank you very, very much. We welcome of course the wife of the former Military Governor of Akwaibum State, Mrs. Fumi Idongasen Kaa who is here. Please put your hands together for her and welcome our ladies and gentlemen. We thank very special and welcome the chairman of the People's Democratic Party in Akwaibom State and by extension all the members of the party, those who have held positions or are holding positions at the national level of the party, those, those who have held or are holding, are holding positions, positions at the zonal, zonal level, level and of, and of course, course members, members of both the state working committee and the state Ex executive council of the PDP. We welcome all of them here. PDP! <laughs> Thank you very much. You welcome very specially His Excellency Ambassador Assam Assam, former ambassador to Russia, senior advocate of Nigeria. Welcome you, sir. All the members of the National Assembly that are here, senators, members of the House of Representatives, we acknowledge your presence at this very important event. It's a pleasure to have all of you join us here. Thank you very much. Members of the Aquaibum State Executive Council, we welcome you, commissioners and special advisors. Chairman of Boards, Commissions, and Technical Committees, and their members that are here. Members of the Akwaibom State House of Assembly. And I've seen a good number of them here at this event, including that one representing the people of Mpanenin in the Akwaibom State House of Assembly. We welcome all of you to this very special event, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. We welcome also the heads of the different security agencies that are here. We welcome very specially the Chairman of the Board of um, VKS, and of course, the managing director, as a matter of fact, the entire management staff of VKS Construction that are here. The chairman engineer, Oliver Ebong, fellow Nigeria Society of Engineers, is here. The managing director, Mr. Ono Kumra, is also here. We will, through them, recognize and acknowledge all the members of staff of VKS that are here. Please put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you very, very much for having come to be part of this very important event. We have here a representation from the local governments. I've seen the chairman of the local government areas, chairman of Mpanenin. He may be in acting capacity, but showing a lot of capacity. And the chairman of all other local government areas that are here will welcome you. We welcome, please, those with the um, posters, can you please put them down so we can see the people sitting behind, please. We welcome also very specially all of the royal fathers that are here. We have here our fathers from the traditional institution across here, Paramount rulers, clan heads, and village heads, those from Panenin and those from other local government areas. Welcome our senior citizens from this federal constituency and other federal constituencies that are here. 
across the entire state. I can see from where I'm the Vice Chancellor of the Kwaibom State University, Professor Mr. Udoisian. We welcome all of the very specially invited guests that are here, members of the political class, representation from the corporate sector. We welcome all of the people of Akwaibum that are here, the men, the women, the youth, the students, the people of this local government area, every single individual that is here. Akwaibum is songo. Mbareni ni songo. Ikorabasino. Obulu tiki. Ekiri dorio. Okobomba wairukine. Ubiyo mayi. Ubiyo mayi. Anangma. OJ, 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 Bari Urwan. OJ, Bari Oro. Kum, 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 ukpabio. Ukpabio. Brokep. Brokep. Akwa Ibo Misongo. Mbo, Fred, Fred, me, Mosi, Rombi, Akwa Ibo. Mwa, happy to be here. Please put your hands together for yourself, whatever it is that you are. Iban Akwa Ibo, Mbo, Iba, Mi. Iban, Kure, Mere, Nambang, Iso. Build the youth, build the youth, greatest Nigeria student. Your Excellency, the Governor of Akwaibom State, Your Excellency, our special guests, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are here today for a very significant event. A little over four years ago, as a matter of fact, in the year 2017, the groundbreaking of this facility, the St. Gabriel's Coconut Factory was there. A good number of people asked questions. A good number of people were wondering if this was eventually going to see the light of day. On that day, we were told that as at the day of the groundbreaking, a liter of coconut oil, virgin coconut oil in the international market at that time we hear, was about $16. And those who did the mathematics told us it was even more valuable than the crude oil that all of us are struggling over in this country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on that day, all of us were encouraged to go back to see how we can begin to produce and plant and cultivate coconut, knowing how important that particular resource is to the pharmaceutical industry, to the cosmetic industry, to very many industries across the world. As a matter of fact, a researcher told us that coconuts can be put to 365 uses on that same day. Ladies and gentlemen, there have been a series of activities that have happened ever since then. Facility tours here by His Excellency and other guests, and their progress reports daily, weekly, monthly, annually. And now we are here for the realization of that dream. We are here because the machines have started working. We are here because we can actually turn the raw coconut into very many things, including coconut oil. We are here because this dream has finally become reality. We are here because Udomi Manuel saw the future, and we are here to see the actualization of that future. Ladies and gentlemen, let me therefore welcome you to this commissioning ceremony of this coconut factory taking place here in Pareni, in local government area of Akwaibom State. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me invite the Honorable Commissioner in charge of the Ministry of Agriculture here in Akwaibum State, Dr. Ofiong Ofo, to please kindly come up here, Madam, to take a few minutes and give us a welcome address at this event. Please put your hands together for her, ladies and gentlemen. State and his dear wife, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am both honored and delighted to welcome you all to Mpadenin today on behalf of our dear Governor, His Excellency Udomi Manuel, and the Ministry of Agriculture. 
as a Kwaibom state, attains yet another milestone in its industrialization drive with the commissioning of the fully automated factory and ancillary infrastructure for the processing of virgin coconut oil. I salute the vision and ingenuity of my boss, our dear governor, Udom Emmanuel, for birthing this project. One of the many aimed at industrialization and development of the state, as well as creation of thousands of jobs within the value chain and generation of income in both local currency and foreign exchange. The St. Gabriel's Coconut Factory project was flagged off with a groundbreaking ceremony by His Excellency Governor Dom Emmanuel on the 24th of May 2017. The factory is the biggest of its kind in Africa and has the capacity of processing a million coconuts per day commencing with a starting capacity of 300,000 coconuts per shift, thus producing 22,000 tons of coconut oil per shift. Coconut oil has diverse uses in catering, cosmetic products, the automobile industry, confectionery, physiotherapy, and medicine. It is indeed like liquid gold. Given the global market price of coconut oil, which currently stands at about $2,016 per ton, it is clear that this project has the potential to boost foreign exchange earnings from agriculture. In order to ensure an adequate provision of raw materials to the factory and sustainability of this laudable initiative, the Akwaibom State Government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, was the driving force in establishing coconut plantations in Isnobolo, Ikorobasi, Mkwareni, and Okobo local government areas. In addition, cultivation of coconut palms is being encouraged in all the 31 local government areas, as well as in public, primary, and secondary schools through the free distribution of coconut seeds by the state government. It is our conviction that as St. Gabriel's Coconut Oil Factory commences operations, it will boost the state's economy and give individual coconut farmers a ready market for their produce and further encourage our farmers and indeed all our Kwaibomites to key into the clarion call by the state government for small, medium and large-scale cultivation of coconut palms. I wish to extend my warmest appreciation to the erstwhile Commissioner for Agriculture, Dr. Gloria Edith, whose zeal for this project made it feasible. The contracting firm, VKS Nigeria Construction Limited, for their diligence and timely completion of this project, and to the management and staff of the Ministry of Agriculture for their support towards the realization of this project. To the host community, I say thank you for your peaceful disposition and cooperation. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, once again, I welcome you to the commissioning of St. Gabriel's Coconut Factory. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Ophiom, for Commissioner for Agriculture, Kwaibom State. Can we please put our hands together for her, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much. Of course, we know this is a very gender-sensitive administration. We have quite a number of very qualified and accomplished women who are serving government in different levels. One of them is that Honorable Commissioner. But Your Excellency the Governor, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that even from the date of groundbreaking up till today, there are still a good number of people who are asking what exactly are the processes that are in this building, whose doors and of course whose machines will be turning on in not too long a time. So let me invite to so kindly come up here and give an overview of this project, a gentleman who will definitely know every single thing there is to know about it because his organization has played a very critical role in facilitating and making this dream come to pass. A gentleman who has been a very good friend of Aquaibum State and him and his team have more or less taken up residence here and have been very responsible corporate citizens. 
Managing Director of VKS Nigeria Construction Company Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, Obong Mr. Ono Kumrao. Please put your hands together for him as he comes up here to speak to us. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Akwebom State, and his dear wife. Your Excellencies, all serving and former governors here present. And very distinguished personalities, welcome to the commissioning. Your Excellency, on behalf of our group, EKS, I'm very delighted to be a part of this historic moment. And not just at Kwebom State, but even in Nigeria. A day that will go down in history of this lovely country. And following the commission of this virgin coconut oil factory, this will be the very first in Nigeria and the largest in continent of Africa. Your Excellency, we stand proud as a company who shares in this vision of developing and transforming the landscape of Akwebom State and its people through life-touching projects such as this one. And we really want to thank you on this project. And Your Excellency, we want to thank you to give us this opportunity to bring our professionalism and to be a part of this investment of the government in our lovely state. We, look for, we, we are looking forward to, to continue the partnership with the state on more infrastructural and investments even now before 2023 your term ends. And Your Excellency my dear brother called me Obong because you named my son Akpan Obong. So I, I have a dear citizen son. So me and my family, we want to thank you on the name that you have given to our son. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Obong, I call by now, Obong. I call by now, yeah. Obong, Onokumra. Thank you very much, the Managing Director of VKS Construction. Your Excellency, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my dear brothers and sisters, that gentleman said something which I think is very instructive. In the course of his speech, when he was referring to Akwaibom, he said, our dear state. And that means that he has come to regard this state as home. And he, of course, has contributed a whole lot to the socioeconomic life of this state through the organizations that he leads, and of course, through the lives that they have touched, and so very many interventions of that organization. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is how the partnership across the world nowadays should be. Can we please put our hands together one more time for Mr. Ono Kumral? Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this of course is a ceremony, but it is a ceremony where the people have come out to express appreciation. It's a ceremony because this project did not add to the list of failed projects in this country. And as a matter of fact, there isn't any such project ever since Mr. Domi Manuel came into office that he has begun that by the grace of God he has not been able to see to completion. We are going to take brief messages of goodwill on this occasion. And the people speaking, of course, I'm very sure will be conveying the sentiments of the broader population of people in this local government area and in this state and beyond whose lives, whose businesses, whose economies will be touched by this facility. And so we'll um, invite the member representing Barenin State Constituency in the Akwaibum State House of Constituency in the Akwaibum State House of Assembly, Honorable Victor Ikwere, who will take a minute or two and present a brief message of goodwill on this occasion. 
please put your hands together for the House of Assembly member as he comes up here to speak. Thank you. Your Excellency, the performing governor of Aquaibum and his dear wife. Your Excellency, I want to thank God Almighty for giving you to Aquaibum people because it wouldn't have been any other person, especially at this time where the economy of Nigeria has crashed. Your Excellency, you have done more than expected. Binding people are very happy with you, especially for deciding to side this project in Baranin. Your Excellency, the first time our company the House of Assembly for oversight and function, I was asking myself if this project is going to be a partnership project with a foreign firm under build, operate, and transfer. But today, we are here for opening ceremony that the company belongs to Aquarium people. Your Excellency, we thank you for this. Your Excellency, I know that you have opened, with this company, we have opened commercial businesses because my people out there are going to make money and you are going to produce more millionaires because people that own shops and people that intend to own businesses around here are going to gain so much. But Your Excellency, there is one request before I leave. The request is from the traditional rulers through the paramount ruler. All the stakeholders of binding, women, youths, and the rest. They are saying, Your Excellency, please, that binding people should be given preference in terms of job creation. They, for them to work here, Your Excellency, if you do that, we will be so happy, and Your Excellency, Again, that we know that you are going for the presidency in 2003. I and the entire people of Berlin are solidly behind you. And we assure you that you are going to be there come 2023. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, can you give the house member a beautiful round of applause, please? Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much, Honorable Victor Aquera. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, please, um, for time and the lack of it, we'll please appeal to those who are presenting the good deal messages to kindly limit it to a maximum of two minutes. Let me invite to also present a message of goodwill on this occasion. The member representing Padeni Nikolabas, Eastern Obolu, in the House of Representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome the Right Honorable Francis Charles Uduyo as he comes here to speak to us. Excellency, the Governor of Aquaibums and his dear wife, Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor, Mr. Speaker, let me drive on the already established protocol. Mr. Your Excellency, we thank you for this vision to establish this coconut refinery in Marani and in our dear state. We see this as a very good innovation and we appreciate it. We also use this opportunity to thank the contracting company for living up to expectation by not abandoning this project. Again, we thank you. 
Again, for our people, it is important that we cultivate the habit of planting coconut. Now that we have a coconut refinery, we we'll need more of it. Your Excellency, we want you to see Akwaibom State and replicate this at the national level by the grace of God when you'll be granted the opportunity to lead Nigeria. Do this at the national level so that glory will be taught to you. Thank you, Your Excellency, and may Akwaibom be blessed. Thank you, Your Excellency. You've done it in Akwaibum and we expected you're going to do it better in Abuja and in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, the next goodwill message, please. Let's make welcome the Speaker of the Akwaibum State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Enyekan Basi. Can we put our hands together for the Speaker? Thank you very much. Excellency, the executive governor of Kwebom State and his dear wife. Your Excellency, the deputy governor of Kwebom State. Please permit me to stand on the already established protocol. I thank God Almighty for a day such as this. I thank God for his grace and for a clement weather. I will not take too long, but manage to pass a judgment on behalf of the Seventh Assembly and the people of Kwebom State. They elected us to represent them. I will pass a verdict on this project and on His Excellency Dom Gabriel Emmanuel that all monies appropriated have been judiciously used. Because as the legislature, we believe that every money appropriated by the assembly should be made good use of. And Your Excellency, you've done that rightly. We've had so much of excitement. We thank God that he has come to be just a little over four years. You proved necessary as wrong. I thank God for giving a quibum a governor such as you. I believe you replicate the same thing in Nigeria. God bless a quibum and thank you. Thank you, Mparani, and thank you all of you, my dear president. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Speaker of the Kwaibom State House of Assembly, saying that on behalf of the, of the legislative arm of government, who provide oversight on government's responsibilities and expenditure, that he can vouch for the fact that His Excellency has actually applied funds for purposes, purposes meant for without any form of wastage. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will at this point invite to also present a brief message of goodwill, a brother who has come all the way from the state that prides itself and rightly so as a food basket of the nation, a former member of the Federal Executive Council, former Honorable Minister of Interior. Ladies and gentlemen, a brief message of goodwill from our friend and brother, Comrade Abba Moro. Please put your hands together for him as he comes up here to speak. Thank you. Excellency, the Executive Governor of Akwaibo State and his amiable wife, my brother, the former Governor of Benue State, Senator Gabriel Tuwa Suswam, the Deputy Governor of Benue State, <laughs> Deputy Governor of Akwaibo State, let me respect the well-established protocol. As you can see, I am from Benway State. But I'm a friend of your governor and a friend of Akwaibon State. I have come here on the conviction that I will go to see something good. I want to tell all of us here 
that there are politicians who enter politics by accident. There are also politicians who enter politics by conviction. And those are the visionary politicians that leave their footprints on the sands of history when they govern the people. I want to make bold to say here that your governor is one of those that has entered politics out of conviction. And today I am not unmindful of the other legacy projects that your governor has undertaken since he became governor. I want to say here that it is the legacy uh, projects that you leave behind that speaks for you when you leave office. No amount of money after office can speak for you. And I'm sure by the time you leave office, Your Excellency, this project will continue to speak for you. I want to ask a favor from you. When you become the president of this country, replicate the same thing that we have done in Aquaibon that everybody here is singing praises of you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless Aquaibon. Distinguished Senator Comrade Abba Moro, can we please put our hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, in the English language, on days like this, you will hear someone say that the drums were rolled out. So at this point, we're going to take a brief pause from the speeches and the messages. And for about five minutes or so, take a brief cultural presentation here from the New Dawn Cultural Troupe. Because it is that kind of day where we express our joy, where the people come out and celebrate. Because they can see that government and governance is really working and thinking of the future of the people. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a brief break from the speeches and invite the New Dawn Cultural Troupe to give us some entertainment. Please put your hands together for them, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the cultural troupe for an excellent performance there. Just the tip of the iceberg of the very rich cultural heritage of the people of Aquaibum State. Be it music, be it dance, be it other forms of traditional entertainment, you will find some of the finest and some of the very best here in Aquaibum State. But Thank you very, very much. Your Excellency is very distinguished, ladies and gentlemen. The next speaker is the gentleman whom I earlier introduced as one who has really found home in Akwaibo. A gentleman who has been more of a friend to His Excellency the Governor and the people of Akwaibo State. A gentleman who comes here very regularly, appreciates what is happening here, contributes. A lawyer, a former member of the House of Representatives, who has also been in the Senate, but of course he has served his government and his state as governor, not for one term, but for two terms. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the campaign council of the Domi Manuel Presidential Project and former governor of Benue State. Please make welcome for his remarks on this occasion, His Excellency, distinguished Senator Gabriel Susam, as he comes up here to speak to us. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the, the incoming president of our great country, and the incoming first lady of our great country. Very distinguished, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, this is a PDP event. This is a PDP state. And so, we cannot ignore the PDP mantra. PDP! I can hear you people very well. You are expecting to present and produce a president under PDP. PDP! That is a shout of people who want to produce a president. Your Excellency, let me say that I'm most humbled to be here by stroke of fate. I will be the one commissioning this history-making project. The, on the program, you will see that the vice president of our dear country was supposed to be here. But as we know, the office of the vice president most of the time is encumbered with different programs. The Vice President have been here several times to commission different projects. And so if he's unable to be here today, we can excuse him, knowing that he also wants the same seat that your son is also vying to go. And so it will not be in his own interest to promote him over and above him. And so we can excuse the Vice President from not being here. I hope you can excuse the Vice President from not coming. You do not want somebody to come and compete with your old son who wants to be President, with somebody who also wants to be President. Your Excellency, let me thank God for yourself and the people of this great state. 
I have been part of many projects that you have commissioned in this state. As a former governor, I know what it takes to put down projects. The resources that are shared in Abuja are grossly inadequate for any one person to put the kind of project which you have put on ground in your state. Except, except one who is committed, determined, and ready and willing to impact positively on his own people. Your Excellency, your people might not totally appreciate what you are doing for them. But when you leave this office to assume a higher office, they will now appreciate that a young man came, saw a choir bomb in a state of despair, and left a choir bomb a prosperous state. The project that you've built, Your Excellency, any person can build road. As important as building road is to the economy of a state or a country, building factory that will create wealth, that will give jobs and enhance the well-being of the people is more important than any other thing that you will do for the people. The House of Assembly member here made a request that the people of this immediate community must be given preference. I want to join him. The essence of this factory is to create words in Aquaibom because most people from Aquaibom did not know that the refinery could be built to refine coconut and make coconut oil out of coconut. Myself, I'm somebody who enjoys eating coconut with bread. So when you told me that you were building a refinery for coconut oil, I was wondering what you were talking about. Most of us seated here will be witnessing this for the first time. And so you, you have broken history in different ways. I was here to commission with the vice president then, the most intelligent building that has ever been built by any state government. I was there. I have all witnessed other groundbreaking projects that you've commissioned. We are here today. Let me say this to the people of Akwaibom. This gentleman has aspired to be president. And I agree to chair the campaign council of his presidency for different reasons. And let me tell you that anywhere we have been to in this country, he has spoken. The people say you don't need to speak. You have antecedent. You have sincerity of purpose. You have the integrity and you've shown capacity. The people of Akwaibom, your country, Nigeria, is unable to have an airline. A country as big as Nigeria does not have an airline. Your own son came into office and decided. To put a choir bomb on the world map of aviation. When I first took a bomb air when it was started, and I was inside, they were speaking one language. I said, How can they be speaking a choir bomb in this aircraft? For goodness sake. That is what he has done. The white people, the thief people, the Yoruba people, the Igbo people, when they enter a choir bomb, even if you don't want to listen to a choir bomb language, you will hear it in our aircraft because they must enter it. When you take any international airline, whether it's Lufthansa, Emirates, Lufthansa must speak Dutch. Emirates, they must speak Arabic. When you take it bomb they must speak what? Your language is now the celebrated language worldwide. And so, I expect that you, Aquaibon people, should give this young man all the support to become president of this country. 
what he has done in Akwaibom has not been done by any state in this country. It has not even been done by the Federal Republic of Nigeria as a country. If we let him as president and he replicate what he has done here, Nigeria will go back to the olden days where all the factories were in existence. The insecurity that has pervaded this country has inhibited any direct foreign investment in our country. Here you have a governor who, in spite of the insecurity that is known globally, has attracted different companies into this state. And so, what you are commissioning here is not just this project. You are commissioning a quiet bomb here today on the global stage. That is what is being commissioned here today, a quiet bomb. So don't think that you are commissioning a mere project. You are commissioning a quiet bomb on the global stage. A quiet bomb was one of the states that was treated as a, as a pariah state a few years back. And most of you knew. Nobody was ready to come here. Beyond a quiet bomb, where will you go? A quiet bomb has become a tourist destination. Because of the activities of this young man who was not known to you before then, became the governor, and like my colleague said, will be leaving this state with very bold footprint on the time of history. It is something that we should all celebrate. Other Nigerians as well are looking for people like this. I wish he was from Benue, where I'm from. But Akwaibom and Benue people are one. We are all one. And so the Benue people will be standing very strongly behind the aspiration and ambition of this gentleman from Akwaibom. We are not here. His project has spoken for him. I will not say much. Whatever I said, you people have known. All I want to encourage us is that we have a big project. I know a quiet bomb. They have very pretty ladies who are married in different parts of the country. Encourage those people, wh wherever you are married, encourage them to produce delegate for us on the 29th of this month so that we walk out at the convention center for the first time in the history of this country with a candidate from Akwaibom as the presidential candidate of this country. So I'm here only to encourage ourselves that Nigeria is now ready to jettison primordial sentiments and, and elect a young man who has the energy, who has the integrity, who has the antecedents, who has the pedigree, above all, above all, who love God and has the sincerity of purpose to take this country to a positive level, not the next level that APC have told us, to a positive level. And so, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, once again, I'm most humble to be the one commissioning this St. Gabriel. My name is Gabriel, so God in his infinite mercy knows why I will be the one commissioning this. And so I want to thank you very much for giving me this privilege to be here not just to make remarks, but to also associate myself with this very wonderful people of Akwaibom and also this project. May the Almighty God, in His finished mercy, continue to bless you. And may God give you your heart desire. And may we on the 29th come back to Akwaibom to celebrate you as the candidate of our party. Once again, may God bless us all. Thank you. His Excellency A, Senator Gabriel Suswa, former governor of Benue State, chairman of the campaign council for the Udomi Manuel Presidential Project. Can we please put our hands together for him?
Thank you very much. Aqua Ibo Misonga. Build the youth. Bomi Ban, my Bami. Iban Emede. Iban Emeket Governor. Iban Emeket First Lady. Iban Emede, okay, Governor. Ya Gambo. Abi Kaukeo. Abi Kaukeo. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Almost every single person who has come here to speak has made use of a single English word, replicate, which means in the Ibibio language, with Nanguwet, come and do as you have done. And that is because people have acknowledged, have seen visibly excellence in leadership in Akwaibom State over the past seven years plus. This is because the people of Nigeria have come to see that if this country was being led the way Akwaibom State is being led, then we will be definitely in a better place. Our students will definitely not be at home. They would be in university. There will definitely be more jobs for the people of this country. There will definitely be more security for the people of this country, just like Akwaibom has enjoyed near absolute peace over the past seven years. And this has been because, by the grace of God, we have a leader whose vision has been able to rub off positively on the rest of Nigeria. Let me therefore invite this forward-looking leader of Akwaibom State, this leader that the people hope will become the leader of Nigeria so that he can replicate in Nigeria what he has done in Akwaibom State, the man behind this vision, His Excellency, the Governor of Akwaibom State, Mr. Udum Emmanuel to kindly come forward and address us on this occasion. Shall we be seated? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Build the youth. Greatest Nigerian student. Akwai Bomisan. Akwai Bomisan. Ivan in Nambandi say. Oboli Tri. Oboli Tri. Development. Abazulu Loye Onaisa. Thank you, thank you. Good dong. Female youth. Aha. Your Excellency, the First Lady, Mrs. Mata Udom Emmanuel. Your Excellency, my brother, the immediate past governor of Benue State, Chairman Udom Emmanuel 
Campaign Council for President 2023. <laughs> Distinguished Senator Dr. Gabriel Suswam. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor. I said, Good day, you. Uncle Mo. Uncle Mo, you're at it, you. Mr. Speaker, Acquibo Mass of Assembly, distinguished senators here present, Senator Bob, Senator Aloy Shosetuk, distinguished Senator Ibo Asien, and our brother, former minister, distinguished Senator Abba Muro, that has joined us also. Let me appreciate the Nigeria's former ambassador to Russia. His Excellency, Chief Assam Assam. Members of the House of Rep, here present. Other members of the National Assembly, the wife of my late DG, wife of the former military administrator of our state, Mrs. Zidon Senka, the chairman of our party, represented by the deputy chairman, and the entire PDP family, the secretary to the state government, head of the civil service, commissioners, special advisors, Chairman of Boards and Commission, Service Commanders here present, members of the Aquaibo Mass of Assembly. Permit me to just recognize everybody, our royal fathers, and say, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, because of time. And I really, really want to appreciate the chairman of VKS, the entire management of VKS. Let me Today, on behalf of the government and good people of Akwaibom State, once again, welcome all of you to a landmark project. A project that if you find any in Africa of this magnitude, of this size, of this uh, smartness, and of this level of seriousness, then come and show me anywhere. Today, People have said so much, but let me start. My brother started by saying, thank God, uh, is at St. Gabriel's Coconut Refinery. We all know Gabriel means God is my strength. Gabriel interprets vision and dreams. Gabriel rest up sleeping and grounded Daniel. Gabriel was a quick, swift answer to the prayers of saints. Gabriel was used to banish long-term barrenness and fruitlessness and announce productivity and fruitlessness and fruitfulness. So today, with the commission of this thing, we banish barrenness of our economy, barrenness of productivity, barrenness of prosperity, and we pronounce fruitfulness in our land. Gabriel is a carrier of good news, of joy and gladness. What's the good news? The good news is, when others are saying, there's a casting down. Akwaibom is saying, what do? There's a lifting up. When nobody is interested in bringing one dollar to Nigeria for an investment, Akwaibom is partnering foreign direct investment into our state. Gabriel showcased the incredible power of God. This is an example that not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the Almighty, that we can put this on ground. Today, you are going to witness the first of its kind, nowhere in Africa, that you can find a factory like this, that is refining virgin coconut oil in Africa, with a capacity to process one million nuts a day in three shifts. And today, we all know, in the world market, virgin crude coconut oil goes for $6 a liter. And 221 liters make one barrel. So if the much talks about crude oil, is about $110 a barrel. It means that virgin coconut crude oil is $1,326 a barrel. How many times higher than the crude oil? price. You can work that out. So today, we are taking the vision. Everybody is announcing all over the world 
that is soon be happening that the demand for crude oil will not be as it used to be before. But as a visionary leader, as a leader who interprets the dreams, as a leader who sees tomorrow, as a leader who wants to lead the people to prosperity, as a leader who wants the well-being of his people, we are trying to let the world know, even if you take away our crude oil, that you will never, never catch us napping. That we would have been prepared for the future. That the entire world will be coming here to buy something that is more precious. Something that is more pricey. Something that is more revenue driven than the crude oil. And that is crude virgin coconut oil. Today, we are trying to prove the naysayers wrong. Everybody doubted. When we came up, we told the whole world that in this life, God, everything you need in life has been provided by God. It is left for somebody who has the capacity, the creativity, the ideas to turn what God has given into money. Yeah. Into money. So today, what we are doing, what we used to see when we were much younger, whenever you see coconut, typical of Africans, you know, if an African man see a very big eagle, what do you think he thinks of? Pepper soup. If a Yubo man sees a big eagle, do you know what he thinks of? Gulf Stream 650. How the eagle takes off, how he flies, how he glides, how he steadies, and from there they use that and make a replane. But when a black man sees eagle, ah, and you go by on Pepper soup. So in the same way, you have a governor, when I just saw coconut everywhere, especially if you drive through Mbarenin, everywhere you see coconut. I said, no, coconut cannot just begin and end with coconut rice and also using it to eat bread. Medi Taiwa. That we can turn coconut to money. So we put on our thinking cap. And by the time we did a research, we discovered that God made coconut. And coconut has 365 uses. Which means that every day of our lives, God has provided a use for coconut. Is that the kind of product God has blessed us with? That we can just ignore while we are still looking for money? While we are still looking for prosperity? So that's how we went on this mission. We now said, yes, if God gave us this, and coconut is one of those things created by God for us in Aquaibo, that once you plant it, you can go home and sleep. 99 years to come, the coconut my grandfather planted is still yielding till today. 99 years, coconut will still be yielding. Good yield. And you don't have to do anything based on the nature of our soil. Have you ever seen anybody buying fertilizer for coconut? No. I've not seen it yet. Too. So you just leave it there. You just be making money. Just be making money. So I want to announce, anywhere you have coconut, that your coconut today will turn into money for you. Yeah. That's what they call creation of wealth. It takes a leader who knows what to do that can actually turn what was for domestic consumption, what people did not consider anything useful out of it, into something of value, into something of money. The same way, the other, sometime last year or year before, we were in Uyo, we said that all this bamboo that you people cut off, you think bamboo attracts snake, that we can turn it to money. We set up the first ever in the whole of Africa toilet roll factory that produces tissue paper out of dry bamboo. Today, we are the only state, and by extension, the only country in Africa that is using dry bamboo to do tissue paper. Now we've made another history where we are using our coconut to process. And let me also say something. This factory is so modern, is so adaptive, is so ICT compliant that the same production line can also manufacture and produce palm kernel oil crude, virgin, palm kernel oil without changing a pan. And if you fly through Aquaibum, 
80% of palm trees you're seeing here, they were all planted by God, though. They were all planted by God. As we are standing here now, more are germinating. So I want to encourage our people that we are based on our Dakota philosophy, what you have is all that you need to get what that God has destined for you. That we should rise to that faith of greatness that God has given to us. And today, we are also standing to tell Nigeria, if we can do this, at the subnational, where we don't control the policies. Only God knows, Udom Emmanuel as the president, what will happen to Nigeria when we control the policies. When we control the policies. We came into governance determined to change the narrative of our development through industrialization and infrastructure renaissance. My brother has said so. Anybody can award a contract to build road. Anybody can award a contract to build bridges, but no, not many, at least I'm yet to see, between Nigeria and Ghana, not many leaders can create an airline. Not many leaders can set up a refinery to refine crude coconut vegetable oil. Only very few. It takes a whole lot of thinking. The technology you are seeing here is a combination of Asian and European technologies in order to transfer skills and then develop our people. Let me also alert the fears of the community. This week that we are entering, we are going to draw an agreement for training. And we are taking cognizance of all the three local government areas that have given us land, four right now, including our cover, that has given us land for the plantation. Our integration strategy is to plant 2 million seedlings before I leave office. Today, I think we've gone beyond 1 million. And one stand of hybrid coconut sprouts into about 5 or 6. And this bunch is expected to yield between 49 and 57 knots as they go. So if it sprouts into 5 or 6, even if 1 million stands yields at the same time, and we harvest... It means that by the time we harvest that, multiply even an average of 50 by 5. How much will it give you? So it means for 250 days, we can be processing with only one set of harvest. So I don't see any reason, even when I move from here, to hold on to the affairs of Nigeria and do something bigger. Why this factory will not be producing on daily basis? No reason. No reason whatsoever. So... We've planned so well. We have a plantation that will feed the factory. We are going to transfer technology. We are sending a whole lot of people on training. Because this is not one direction technology. When you go around, you'll be, you'll be amazed at the power of God that is working here. And the wisdom of God in your leader. To be creative. To think deep. And to make sure it turns what God has given us into our world. So it's on that note... I don't want to say much until you see it yourself. It's on that note, I want to invite my brother, the chairman, Udom Emmanuel for President Campaign Council, Dr. Gabriel Suswam, His Excellency, and my dear wife, and all the dignitaries to join me as we commission this project, and then we take a factory tour. Let them see. The seven wonders of Aquaibom State today. The wonders of the coconut turning to virgin crude oil and from there turning to money. Yabasedion Aquaibom. Yabasedion Iban. Yabasedion Eden. Yabasedion Youth. Yabasedion Students. Aquaibom is so. Oh! Moya Aquaibom, I know His Excellency, the Governor of Aquaibom State. Thank you very much. As we proceed for the project commissioning and facility tour. Check, check, check.
Yes, it was a very hard day here at Mkwareden. And a very kudos to most of uh, people who came out all to support this project. And I want to thank His Excellency sincerely. You've seen it. You've seen inside of the factory. You've seen everything. So it's not gimmicks. It's not make-believe. It's not metrics. Rather, it is reality. It's happening here in a quiet state. So make well to plan how you're going to do business here. And know that coconut uh, factory is located here. And we want to believe that in Nigeria, uh, we'll begin to support leaders who have vision, who have ideas, who will be able to you know, run away from uh, <coughs> handouts. What I call handout is just go there, sit down, when petroleum product is sold or when food oil is sold, and then you feel you can share. No, we need to be creative. Very soon, petroleum products will no longer be important in our economy. Like I said before, we have countries that are known on electric vehicles and then nobody will use uh, petrol anymore as time goes on. So on behalf of everybody who made this program, this live broadcast a success. I want to thank uh, the man behind the ICT Department of Government House, Uyo Aquaibom State, Engineer, uh, Engineer Solomon Ayo, and of course his crew, the executive uh, producer of this event has been uh, the Chief Press Secretary, Ekere Teodo, and of course the entire media team of His Excellency. My name is Samson Akwan, aka Politics Today, saying I'm taking you to another one. You know what? The secret is this. I don't let it out of the bag. His Excellency is soon going to commission the automobile assembly plant in Akwaibom State. Don't go any further. Bye-bye. God bless Akwaibom. God bless Nigeria. Gabriel was used to banish long-term barrenness and fruitlessness and announce productivity and fruitlessness and fruitfulness. So today, with the commission of this thing, we banish barrenness of our economy, barrenness of productivity, barrenness of prosperity, and we pronounce fruitfulness in our land. Gabriel is a carrier of good news, of joy and gladness. What's the good news? The good news is, when others are saying there is a casting down, Akwaibom is saying what do? There is a lifting up. When nobody is interested in bringing one dollar to Nigeria for an investment, Akwaibom is partnering foreign direct investment into our state. Gabriel showcased the incredible power of God. This is an example that not by power, not by might, but by the spirit of the Almighty that we can put this on ground. Today, you are going to witness the first of its kind nowhere in Africa that you can find a factory like this that is refining virgin coconut oil in Africa <laughs> with the capacity to process one million nuts a day in three shifts. And today, we all know in the world market, virgin crude coconut oil goes for six dollars a liter and 221 liters make one barrel so if the much talks about crude oil is about 110 dollars a barrel it means that virgin coconut crude oil is a thousand three hundred twenty six dollars a barrel how many times higher than the crude oil price you can work that out so today we are taking the vision everybody's announcing all over the world that is soon be happening that the demand for crude oil will not be as it used to be before. But 
as a visionary leader, as a leader who interprets the dreams, as a leader who sees tomorrow, as a leader who wants to lead the people to prosperity, as a leader who wants the well-being of his people. We are trying to let the world know, even if you take away our crude oil, that you will never, never catch us napping, that we would have been prepared for the future, that the entire world will be coming here to buy something that is more precious, something that is more pricey, something that is more revenue-driven than the crude oil. And that is crude virgin coconut oil. Today, we are trying to prove the naysayers wrong. Everybody doubted. When we came up, we told the whole world that in this life, God, everything you need in life has been provided by God. It is left for somebody who has the capacity, the creativity, the ideas to turn what God has given into money. Into money. So today, what we are doing, what we used to see when we were much younger, whenever you see coconuts, typical of Africans, you know, if an African man see a very big eagle, what do you think he thinks of? Pepe soup. If a Yubo man sees a big eagle, do you know what he thinks of? Gulf Stream 650. How the eagle takes off, how he flies, how he glides, how he steadies, and from there they use that and make a replay. But when a black man sees eagle, ah, and you go find them more pepper so. So in the same way, you have a governor. When I just saw coconut everywhere, especially if you drive through Baranin, everywhere you see coconut. I said, no, coconut cannot just begin and end with coconut rice and also using it to eat bread. Medi Taiwa. That we can turn coconut to money. So we put on our thinking cap. And by the time we did a research, we discovered that God made coconut. And coconut has 365 uses. Which means that every day of our lives, God has provided a use for coconut. Is that the kind of product God has blessed us with? That we can just ignore while we are still looking for money, while we are still looking for prosperity? So that's how we went on this mission. We now said, yes, if God gave us this, and coconut is one of those things created by God for us in Aquaibo, that once you plant it, you can go home and sleep. 99 years to come, the coconut my grandfather planted is still yielding till today. 99 years, coconut will still be yielding. Good yield. And you don't have to do anything based on the nature of our soil. Have you ever seen anybody buying fertilizer for coconut? I've not seen it yet too. So you just leave it there. You just be making money. Just be making money. So I want to announce, anywhere you have coconut, that your coconut today will turn into money for you. That's what they call creation of wealth. It takes a leader who knows what to do, that can actually turn what was for domestic consumption, what people did not consider anything useful out of it, into something of value, into something of money. The same way, the other, sometime last year or year before, we were in Uyo, we said that all this bamboo that you people cut off, you think bamboo attracts snake, that we can turn it to money. We set up the first ever in the whole of Africa toilet roll factory that produces tissue paper out of dry bamboo. Today, we are the only states, and by extension, the only country in Africa that is using dry bamboo to do tissue paper. <laughs> now we've made another history where we are using our coconut to process. And let me also say something. This factory is so modern, is so adaptive, is so ICT compliant, that the same production line can also manufacture and produce palm kernel oil, crude, virgin, palm kernel oil, without changing a pan. And if you fly through Aquaibom, 80% of palm trees you're seeing here, they were all planted by God, though. They were all planted by God. As we are standing here now, more are germinating. So I want to encourage our people that we are based on our Dakota philosophy, what you have is all that you need to get what that God has destined for you. That we should rise to that faith of greatness that God has given to us. And today, we're also standing to tell Nigeria, if we can do this at the sub-national, where we don't control the policies, only God knows 
Udom Emmanuel as the president, what will happen to Nigeria when we control the policies? When we control the policies. We came into governance determined to change the narrative of our development through industrialization and infrastructure renaissance. My brother has said so. Anybody can award a contract to build road. Anybody can award a contract to build bridges. But no, not many. At least I'm yet to see between Nigeria and Ghana. Not many leaders can create an airline. Not many leaders can set up a refinery to refine crude coconut vegetable oil. Only very few. It takes a whole lot of thinking. The technology you are seeing here is a combination of Asian and European technologies in order to transfer skills and then develop our people. Let me also alert the fears of the community. This week that we are entering, we are going to draw an agreement for training. And we are taking cognizance of all the three local government areas that have given us land, four right now, including our cover, that have given us land for the plantation. Our integration strategy is to plant two million seedlings before I leave office. Today, I think we've gone beyond one million. And one stand of hybrid coconut sprouts into about five or six. And this bunch is expected to yield between 49 and 57 knots at a go. So if it sprouts into five or six, even if one million stands yields at the same time, and we harvest, it means that by the time we harvest that, multiply even an average of 50 by five. How much will it give you? So it means for 250 days, we can be processing with only one set of harvest. So I don't see any reason, even when I move from here, to hold on to the affairs of Nigeria and do something bigger, why this factory will not be producing on daily basis. No reason. No reason whatsoever. So we've planned so well. We have a plantation that will feed the factory. We are going to transfer technology. We are sending a whole lot of people on training. Because this is not one direction technology. When you go around, you'll be, you'll be amazed at the power of God that is working here. And the wisdom of God in your leader. To be creative. To think deep. And to make sure it turns what God has given us into our world. So it's on that note. I don't want to say much until you see it yourself. It's on that note. I want to invite my brother, the chairman, Udom Emmanuel for President Campaign Council. Dr. Gabriel Suswam, His Excellency, and my dear wife, and all the dignitaries to join me as we commission this project, and then we take a factory tour. Let them see the seven wonders of Akwa Ibom State today. The wonders of the coconut turning to virgin crude oil, and from there turning to money. Yabasedi on Akwa Ibom. Yabasedi on Iban. Yabasedi on Iden. Yabasedi on youth. Yabasedi on students. Akwa Ibom is so... Oh! His Excellency, the Governor of Akwa Ibom State. Thank you very much. As we proceed for the project commissioning and facility tour. Check, check, check. 